uh, just as we thought after the game, our, our comments were really accurate. Our played good in all three game, uh, all three phases at Tech, and uh, we're, we're very pleased with with our team and the way they handled um, playing on the road, the adversity and ups and downs of a football game. So uh, moving forward, um, and each week is a challenge for us, and so uh, we've we've been through the tape and. Um, Starting to put our games plan to get game plans together for for Kansas, uh, and then back uh, back to work tomorrow. Uh, players uh, obviously are are in a good frame of mind, so should have a good week of practice. Mike, considering the way uh, Cliff played a year or a year ago, probably didn't shock you that he was capable of playing like that. Well, he's gotten a little bit better each week, and um, uh, he didn't throw the ball as good as we'd have wanted him to uh, in Iowa. But um, he's certainly shown signs of, of being successful, and um, I think that uh, with the, the personnel that we have, and we're kind of getting a feel for what direction we're going offensively, it gave him a chance to play a little better. That include the fact that you're able to run the ball much better here in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I don't think there's any question with Dez. Being able to carry the the load um, and has allowed Rennie to come in and um, use some of his speed and strength when the defense is uh, fatigued. And then uh, Jeremy came in and made some plays for us. You know, he averaged over five and a half yards per carry and had a nice reception. So uh, hopefully we're moving in the right direction. Does that speak to the confidence you have in him? Uh, Clint that is, he had a couple picks, but you still let him run the offense and throw the football. Well, no question. You, you're going to have to score points, and uh, you know we said this at this time last week that playing out there in Lubbock, and uh, you know you're very seldom you're going to go out there and score 20, 24 points and win the game. You're going to have to score points to win, and so uh, you got to run your offense and correct the mistakes and keep moving forward. What about the fourth down calls for touchdowns? Uh, were those discussed a lot, or did you make the decision? Or did Coach Yersick make the decision? Well, I mean, I make the decision on fourth down calls uh, with input from whichever side of the ball it is. Uh, but, but ultimately, it's my decision whether we go for fourth downs. How much attack you would catch if Barry Sanders came to town and you guys hadn't been able to run the ball this year from Barry? And you've got it going the last two weeks, 600 and some yards. You're making Barry happy, obviously. Well, not a lot because he doesn't talk much. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he follows us, but how much detail he knows about what's going on would probably be pretty scarce. You, you would have not liked it if you had gone the whole season and not got the run game on court. It was important to you to say, this is going to happen. Run game is going to get better. Here you go. Well, um, you know, ultimately we have to win games. You know, we're, we want our team to win games, and um, it's not going to be the same each year. You know, we're, we're playing pretty good defense right now, and uh, I'm really proud of what uh, Ty's done in our kicking game and the commitment our players have given us in the, in the kicking game. And we've had to use those resources different than what we have in the last four or five years. But as we continue to get better on offense and try to play with the style of play that we have in those two phases, um, you know, ultimately that's called coaching. That's what we're supposed to do. And we have to work our way through where we're deficient and get better, but also play to the strengths of our football team. How did the Josh Stewart in the backfield package come about? Oh, just uh, uh, what you see on tape. I mean, not anything out of the ordinary other than uh, a package that we've had in. We've, we've had that five wide receiver package in. Um, I just thought we would have an opportunity for him to run the ball uh, out of that set. and. We should have the second time. We should have been able to run it. Also, we had a uh, we had an edge, but we just didn't didn't get it get out there and get on it. Back example of this game, your best playmaker has a chance to get the ball in a type of situation. Sure, we we would love for him to touch the ball 15 times a game, and uh, you know I've said this for for years that uh, <clears throat> you can't always promise that with a wide receiver. You know you can f toss the ball to him and flip it to him that we do in these spread offenses, but. They can take that away. They can run a guy up the field, run outside, and stop you from doing it. Uh, they can certainly bracket coverage you, which we saw Saturday night, and we saw some last week. Uh, it's easier to give it to a running back. You can almost secure that he's going to get the ball so many times. But uh, so we try to find ways for him to touch the football within the uh, system that we use on game day. 
yet another big punt return. Just talk about how he's really got that side of the, the game. You know, the the, uh, the two punt returns, well, we've had a number of punt returns, but the big ones, uh, we've had nine people blocked on both of them. And uh, Branson um, turned around and blocked the punter Saturday. And the other day, um, our guys turned around and blocked the last guy. And there's always going to be uh, one guy that's unblocked because somebody's carrying the ball. So the scheme and uh, the commitment they've made has been really good. Uh, but in most cases on punt returns, he has to make the first guy miss, and then he has to have vision and find his way through there, and that's where he's really improving over the season. I think it's the past couple of weeks that Clint's an effective runner, but on that 67-yard dash, did that speed even surprise you a little bit? He was able to pull away? I, I've always thought that he was a, an effective runner, um, and there's times when he's he's nifty and, and he's productive. It just doesn't look as good when he's, uh, when he's executing the run game. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions early in the year about the two quarterbacks having different plays. He runs the same plays. And uh, he was nifty and he was effective for us Saturday night. Talk a little bit about the goal line stand uh, late. Uh, I thought it was a rough statement by your defense. Uh, we, we, we thought so. Um, it was play 100, uh, 95, 96, 97, 98, through 100 somewhere in there. And we got great effort from our down guys, got great effort from our backers. And it's not always easy to do. Uh, but we, we made a, uh, a point of that in our meeting on Sunday night, and uh, I'm just very proud of the, of the players. You know, and I said this in the post game, and I, and I mean it, that you know, ultimately it comes down to the players. I mean, we, we do the best we can to put them in position, but they have to make a decision as a team that they want to win, and they want to put more into it than whoever they're playing. And, and sometimes that works out for you as a coach, sometimes it doesn't. And um, the chemistry of this team is getting a little bit better each week. I think that uh, our approach as coaches has improved over the season, and we've contributed to that. But when you're at play 100, when you're on the road, and the other team's this far from scoring, and you hold them, well, I think there's five plays within three yards, maybe. That was pretty impressive. Um, but they got to come back and do it next week. Seems like you guys tied it pretty good. The one missed on the air more, still the eight mm -hmm. yards, but that's really the one I remember. We, we tackled good, not great. Um, you know, there's games that I'd mentioned that we had we were average in tackling, but I thought we tackled good. Uh, that style of play in that offense, you're going to be in space. And um, in our opinion, there's some risk reward. One of the uh, areas that's difficult uh, to defend is getting players in space and them having to tackle. Um, you know, the, the tight end from the for their uh, for their team is. Um, you know, he's exceptional, he's, he's special. And, you know, he's run across the field and it's hard to get him down. But to answer your question, um, for, the mo for, for the majority of the game, we tackled pretty well. Mike, you uh, continue to lead in turnover margin, but it came into play a couple of times the other night. Your sack margin, you, you have 10 more sacks your defense has versus what you've been sacked offensively. And it's almost close to 100 yards difference. Talk about that and, and, and not only what that says, but the impact of those yards getting off the field. We've improved uh, over the last three weeks in, in our protection. Early in the season, we were below average at best. And um, it affected our quarterback play, in my opinion, and, and our overall system. But uh, we, we have gotten better over the last few weeks. And um, negative yardage plays, uh, turnovers, are uh, in, in the tackling, as uh, was just mentioned, are really important in, in today's college football, in our opinion. And as you uh, minimize your negative plays and certainly your, t your sacks and tackle well in space, you have the best chance to win. You know, it's, it's interesting with Kansas now. See, Kansas is way plus in the turnover margin also, and uh, they don't beat themselves. Uh, you know, they've, they've been in games and, and lost late, but for the most part, they, they're not, they, they haven't beaten themselves this year. So um, that's always a concern when you're playing a team that takes care of the football. And uh, our defense has been really good this year in, in being around the football. You know, they had is either three or four fumbles, and they only lost one. They've been very opportunistic in recovering um, their fumbles. I was hoping we would get some of those, but it didn't, didn't work out that way for us. But uh, we were able to get some interceptions at key times. Desmond has 57 carries the last two games. I'm guessing he's built for that, or you wouldn't give him that burden. Well, we didn't know. I mean, we were we were so bad in the running game that uh, you know if you would try anything, if you had Plan B, you'd have tried to make trades and do anything possible to to get the the fire going and, and get a spark. And um, 
you know, as I mentioned, I'm hoping that he matures into being Keith Toaston. Um, he's a long ways from that point, but his attitude's really good. His want to is really good. But you, you know, you can't get away from the fact that we're, we blocked better. Okay, early in the season we didn't block anybody, so it's hard to run the football. It's hard to throw the football. Um, we've improved now. We have some stability up front. Um, those guys uh, looked in the mirror and said, "We've got to improve. We've got to get better." As coaches, we improved and gotten better in that area to fit our style of play. And so you're seeing the benefits of a running game, which is going to allow you to throw more passes. Why Keith Toaston? Why is he the guy that, you, that you'd like him to grow into? Well, I think he's that style of runner. He's certainly not going to be Kendall Hunter. Um, he's, uh, you know, as, as Keith uh, matured in about his uh, third year here, um, he learned to run downhill, run through tackles, and he was a, a physical runner and he got strong. And as the game went on, he was as good in the fourth quarter as he was in the first quarter because uh, he had a physical presence about him and um, didn't really fatigue from a strength standpoint. And, and I think Dez has an opportunity to do that as he matures. Uh, he has carried the workload considerably. And um, I mentioned early in the year, you know, we needed to identify a third back. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that Rennie's moving in that direction, giving us some speed and strength later in the game. And, and I think Jeremy, as he works in his role, will improve. Just like I said, he was over 5.5 yards of carry in the last game. So um, we have to continue to block up front. And our running backs have to work together as a group of three in order for our offense to function as one. Did you get a look at Calvin Barnett's jersey during the game the other night? I saw several of them. <laughs> like all sewn up and everything? Yeah, I mean, it's going to cost us our fortune from a seamstress after last week. Coach, Kansas obviously not having You said it. See, I didn't. Not having the success that they would like, and you all have, you know, three big games after them. Do you make a point to talk to your team about yeah. just focusing on this game, or do you just, you know, assume sure. that? We, got, we did just what you said last night. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned it for years. It's the one great thing about college football. You know, we're in the playoffs right now. You know, we, you can't play 500 and, and, uh, and then get a chance to, to win a conference title or get a chance to, to play for it all at the end um, like other sports. And uh, that's what's so great about, about college football is you have to get ready and play each week. That's why people want to watch. And so in order for us to, to reach a goal, which would be to have a chance to win a conference championship, we certainly have to win this week. And I'm hoping that the maturity we have in our room that's, that's shown up in the last month will help us in practice this week. And it'll help watching the tape, okay? Um, and Baylor got, uh, got Kansas uh, in the middle of the game and, and opened it up and they couldn't catch them. And Tech got them late in the third quarter. But the other teams that played them, there wasn't much difference. And I just watched the entire Texas game is 13 to 6 with a couple minutes to go in the third quarter on the road and and you can just go on so on and so forth on down the road uh, and watch their games so I think the players will see that and and that will help and if they're not mature enough to understand that and prepare then um, uh, it's not as fun for them on Saturday sometimes you don't know how well players appreciate history but every one of the players we spoke to out here and especially Josh Stewart talked about it being significant that Barry Sanders and that 88 team were going to be here. And, you know, Josh is like, I just hope I can meet him. I, I patterned a lot of my game after watching his, his highlights. How, how does that make you feel? I don't know if they paid attention to the quarterback on that team. Well, I gave him a highlight tape. <laughs> I, I gave him a, a you know, highlight tape, you know, where you do this and you do this uh, and let him go. So. But I, I think our players are excited about um, this team coming back. They certainly are aware of it, and at times they've asked questions. And I, you know, and I told them the truth that, you know, if that team was playing in today's football, where we had the media coverage and every game was on TV, and you know the BCS countdown show, and they showed highlights, um, you know, that team it would have been all over the television uh, and been on, you know, f from coast to coast. We went up through game seven, eight, nine. People didn't even know about Barry Sanders on the West Coast and the East Coast. You know, there was a concern then, well, could he get the votes from people on the coast that hadn't seen him play? Uh, so they're very aware of, of our team, and, and, uh, and I know they're looking forward to them being at the game. Will you indeed have Barry meet those guys? Try. You know, I don't even know when he's going to be here. He's, you know, in the bank business and selling cars. Other than that, uh, I know he'll show up at some point. Uh, 
probably be an hour to two hour late, but he'll eventually make it here. Sometimes when you're, we all kind of live in the moment and don't appreciate things. Mm -hmm. 25 years later, what do you appreciate about that 88 team? Well, you know, as I mentioned, one, he's the best college football player ever to play the game. I mean, you can say what you want. Um, he ran up 37 touchdowns and however many yards back when we only had 65 plays a game. We weren't even in high tempo offenses. And he very seldom ever played in the fourth quarter. Some games he didn't play in the second half of the third quarter. So essentially, the guy could have scored 50 touchdowns uh, in an offense that had 65 to 68 plays a game. We weren't even up tempo. So if he's playing today, he runs up 75 touchdowns very easily uh, and probably rushes for 4,000 yards without bl the blink of an eye. Guys, so good on offense that you were honestly shocked that when you had to punt or when somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we were very disappointed uh, when we had to punt. You know, you average 52 points something points a game with 65 plays a game. So if you run, an, uh, you know, you can say what you want. You, have, you run 90 plays a game, you may average 80, 80 points a game nowadays. Did you realize that when you're going to that you look back on that, like what you just said, best ever? Did you know it then? I don't know that we did because there just wasn't that much exposure. You know, just what I was talking about. It took, you know, the end of the season whether people even on the East and West Coast would vote for him for the Heisman, which now, uh, it, it, when they saw his games, he would have won the Heisman after game five or six. So I don't know that we knew that. You know, we just came and played the games and kept on going. What was the best play you ever saw Barry Sanders make? Oh, you know, I think that's somewhat unfair because we all saw the plays that he made. and. Um, I think the greatest plays he made are when he was playing for the Lions and they never blocked anybody. I mean, I'm, I don't know disrespect for the Lions, but uh, when when I was you know young and coaching and um, could see some games, you know, I would watch Emmett, who I think Emmett's a great player, but Emmett was running where people were blocking, and Barry was running, making cuts in the backfield, three yards deep, and making another cut at the line of scrimmage, and then missing, making somebody miss five yards down the field. And those highlights that we show our team uh, sometimes before we have team meetings are the most imp um, impressive plays from him because he's going against the best in the world. I mean, those guys that are tackling are pretty good players, and, and he still makes them look silly. And I think those are his best plays. Do you remember the play at Nebraska? I mean, it's mm -hmm. one that's gets shown. I don't, I don't think it was but a seven or eight yard gain. Right. But I mean, the guy literally ran about, you know, 50, 60, 70 yards to get eight. Right. I remember the play, but nobody else saw it because people didn't see games back then. The the uh, the elevation he made on the fourth down on the goal line at uh, Colorado, there's pictures of it around here. You know, he's I don't know how how high he was, but that would have been all over every network if we would have played in that time. Good. Um. John Lewis and Caleb Lane both have picks for you. I would think they're probably your, two of your leaders on, on your whole mm -hmm. team as a senior. Talk about how they also, these plays they make, I mean, you can't really be a leader unless you're making those kind of plays. And they right. both been real good for you. And, and we showed uh, highlights of them last night to our team. Sean makes the open field tackle in a somewhat a crucial situation over on our bench. Um, Caleb hits the guy on the fourth down play on the goal line. Um, and they've done that, and what happens is they've played so many games and they have so much experience and they've seen so much that they, they can move faster and play faster. You know, there's just no substitute for experience and maturity, and both of those guys are having really good seasons. And, uh, you know, as a coach, it, it just thrills you to death to see it because they're great kids. I mean, they, yes or no, sir, they show up on time, they're leaders, do whatever you ask them to do. If they do something wrong, um, they come right back, and, and they're great kids, and they're playing really well. And, and uh, that maturity and that leadership is why our defense is having success up at this point in the season. Sean told us he graded out as an 81. Does that feel like it was a little low, considering the number of plays that he was having? You know, on defense, <clears throat> if you get mid-70s and up, you've had a really, really good game because they're, they're critical and – in all situations. Um, I don't know that you really have many players on defense that really get above the 85 average ever I've heard of. So uh, for us, um, you know, that would be like uh, getting an, an A in algebra. Uh, for me, it'd be like getting a C. But, but, but anyway, he did really well. Tyler Patman's a guy that six months ago, you weren't even sure he would be here. Yeah. And 
given the injuries and, and just how, how important has he been for you this season? He's been a, a, a really big impact player. Um, you know, we didn't have Kevin Peterson, and he had to play the entire game against a team that had over 100 plays. Uh, he's been tremendous for us on special teams. And um, um, we, we brought him in here as uh, a depth uh, to our team to add some depth to, to our secondary. And, uh, you know, either way you look at it, I mean, he's essentially a starter. You know, you can roll those guys in. We don't see him any different than the rest of them. He's been really good for us on special teams. Mike, was Saturday night the first time this year where your offense actually looked like what you hoped it was going to be this year? You know, we played better at Iowa State, but we didn't throw the ball very good. And um, so we, we put put together all three phases at Tech, and, and offensively we were effective at um, with a somewhat of a balanced attack, which we've had success with that here over the last five or six years. Uh, and, you know, it felt like um, some of the old uh, with the opportunity and ability to run the ball and then also throw it out there. And you had to have, Clint had to be able to start completing some pass, or you guys had to start completing some passes, and you did the other night. That's oh, well, you know, I, I said it in here last week. If we don't throw the ball better, we're not going to win. And uh, there's not any question about it. You know, we can be critical. I can be critical. You guys, the public, anybody can be critical of what's going on. But the fact is, is there was no secret. If we didn't become a better passing team, um, we weren't going to be able to win games in this conference from, from that point forward. It would be the same way Saturday. And, uh, you know, we, we hadn't been any, uh, any good at it. We weren't very good at it. But we, we certainly understood that we had to, to match them uh, and, and be able to score points, which was going to mean we had to throw the football. So that, that probably makes Clint pretty high on your uh, uh, list today. I mean, uh, he, he was able to kind of get you off that low spot. If he didn't throw the one ball to the drop in and run it in for a touchdown, everybody would say he had a great game. Uh, but he did. So that made it that made it to where he had a good game. Uh, and so he was improved, but uh, I, I don't want to get too far away that that we improved up front. Uh, and if we don't continue to play well up front, then they'll we'll continue to get questions about why the quarterback's not not doing any or having any success and, and why we're not running the ball. So um, for us, o over a number of years, when we ran up some big numbers around here, we were always pretty good up front. And we, we didn't make many glaring mistakes. And um, early in the year, we made a lot of glaring mistakes and we weren't uh, very, very polished up front. And so um, the, the backlash of it's not a lot of fun for offensive coaches.